Wow. So the video just stopped again, which makes me feel like this is also part of it. Clearly, I am going to edit this all together <laughs> because what the hell? But um, yeah, anyways, I guess that's just a part of this journey. It's in phases. And that also kind of makes sense with the way that this all looks because it's like a coming together, the journey of coming together. Um, it happens in phases. But I feel like for those of, like, I'm trying to look at, like, where somebody is alone. Because it actually feels like it's closer than ever. Just because it's kind of hard to point out an energy that is completely alone. Except for the energies that are on the outskirts. And I don't feel like those energies are you. Like, that energy belonged to you at some point. And of course, you know, we, we exist within everything. So... There's a part of you in that. But I feel like you're somewhere here in the center. And it's almost kind of hard to find you, pinpoint who you are, because you're so close to your soul family and you all share such a similar vibration, or such a similar um, caricature um, energy that it's hard to not, it's hard to distinguish. Like this is really a collective energy right now. It's hard to point out the individual, which in this specific case is actually really good because it means you're closer than ever. That I can, I'm like thinking of a few pieces that could represent your energy. And especially if you're alone, you're like heading towards this right now. Like if this is a whirlpool, if this is a whirlpool, oh my God, then that's you and you're being pulled in. It's like magnetic. Do you know, do you know, that a girl in the night gets love? Do you know? Yeah, it's pulling you into its vortex. <laughs> it's exciting, it is. It's totally, it feels like, um, it feels like a, a, a birth, a birth of a new world. And to be specific, it doesn't feel like a rebirth. It doesn't feel like a rebirth, it feels like a birth. Um, because it doesn't really feel like you've been here before. Like this is not, if this was, um, if this was, like speaking in the language that we use a lot when it comes to spirituality and patterns and things like that, like this is the end of a cycle. This is the end of like a karmic cycle. You haven't experienced what you're about to experience before, what you're about to experience here. Like this is the end of a spiral. You know how you go around and around and you experience the same things and the same lessons and the same moments, but you come at them with different energy because you know different things now. You know more now. You have the wisdom. This, like, you've closed out a, uh, a spiral. And this spiral that you're heading into is less grand. Like, you, when you, the next spiral that you're within, like, okay, when the spiral closes and you enter the new one, it's like the birth of the universe. So the spiral closes, and in that collapse of the spiral, there's the birth of a new universe. Now, where you land in that birth is really close to the center. It's really close to the center. And that's why I feel like I keep starting this video over, because I was thinking when I started this one over, I was like, I wonder if it's starting us over again just so that we can see alignment in the numbers again, because it's like you are aligned. And it's almost trying to emphasize just how in, in the pull of the universe and in the, in the guidance of the divine you are right now. Um, and yeah, in this birth of the new spiral, you're not starting like at the beginning of a spiral. You're really close to the center. You skipped like a bunch of stuff. Why? Because you've gained a lot of wisdom. You were able to move there. Your spirit moved you there. Your spirit was able to get you there. And you had enough trust and surrender and faith in your own spirit to allow yourself to be moved there without trying to, um, without feeling like you needed to control it. So your body, like you allowed your spirit to move you there. There's a really deep relationship of trust. Even if you don't feel like you trust, and even if you feel like you still have blocks to work through, you are really, you're actually really close to your spirit. You're really close to your higher self because they were able to get you really close to your soul family and to 
like the center of your truth, what is going to make you feel whole. And I can see actually exactly where you, where you need to be, and it's like right in this center. <laughs> and it's surrounded by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Like you're, you're protected. You're totally protected, but I can see exactly where you're supposed to be, and it's right in that center, surrounded by five other immediate, sur immediately surrounded by five other beings. And there you are. And then it feels like there's an open space for something else to come in and feel that way too. Because I wonder if actually your soul family, if for the rest of them, they've already met like one or two of their, of your people. Like I feel like everybody that you are going to meet in your soul family that's significant to you as um, you've already, they've already met at least one person. And I feel like you're coming in. I feel like you're coming in to, <laughs> to fill one of the spots and with that will come the person that's your collaborator, your partner. And I think there's one soul family member who's coming in with some, not baggage, it could be baggage or it could be a family. Like one of them might literally be in a family, like have a wife and kids or a, a husband and kids, um, or is coming in with baggage or is coming in with like something, there's something tagging along behind, actually, well, there's something tagging along behind all of these soul family members. So you're all coming in with your own stuff, which is also just to say like, this is not an energy where you need to be afraid that you're gonna come in with all these problems and your soul family's gonna be perfect and then you're not gonna be able to be what you need to be for them because everybody's got something that they're carrying. Yeah, everybody's got something that they're carrying and actually you don't. You are someone who doesn't have anything that you're carrying. And that's pretty interesting because I feel like there might be, if there's any shame around how empty you feel or how empty your life feels right now, like maybe not like empty, but maybe you just don't really have a lot. Like maybe you don't have any friends right now or you have friends, but nobody that you know, you're know you really super close to. Maybe you don't really know what you're doing with your life. You don't really have a clear um, handle on your purpose or something like that. That's okay, and I feel like what you're bringing to the table for your spirit family, for your soul family, is you are going to help them see, um, you're gonna help them feel safe enough to let go. Because I feel like they have things that they're kind of dragging along with them, and it feels like things that they just have found a way to stay connected to, or these things have found a way to stay connected to them, but you've learned how to let go, and I feel like when you enter the picture, these things are going to fall away. So actually what I was seeing with, it could be either or, because I feel like Spirit gave that option because there is that option. But I think there's also this um, option of you're going to come into a space and maybe there's going to be quite a few people that um, are soul family. But I think that what you're going to find is that it's actually only a few of those people within that group that are actually your soul family. And the people that aren't are connected to your soul family in one way or another, strongly connected, deeply connected like family to the point where um, they are just in that space by, pro like by proxy. They are a part of the soul family, like those conversations that you're happening, but that you're having. But I feel like the closer you get and the more, the more that you feel comfortable with each other and the more you start to feel safe to teach each other what you all know, you're going to help them realize that maybe some of these energies are not meant to be in their orbit anymore and helping them understand how to push energy into the outskirts because it is crowded in the base and at some point we want to be able to expand and have space for ourselves to express ourselves in the darkness in nothingness because what is unique about your soul family you guys know how to build in the dark being a part of the darkness and um being creative in the darkness, being a force of the darkness, a collaborative force of the darkness is something you guys are really good at. Um, and so it's like this energy of not needing too much. You don't need too much. 
in the birth of this new universe, in the birth of this new world, in this new, new life, basically. You don't need too much. You really just kind of need each other and your faith. And your faith is expressed through your relationships as well. Um, it really is quite beautiful though. Like it really is like a solar system. Mercury, Saturn, Jupiter. <laughs> it's, um, it's so interesting. Like this is what I mean when I'm like, we're so creative because like, you know, you pick up a bunch of rocks, you shake them in your hand, and you, sp <laughs> you spread them out. And then you're getting messages. You know, like, that's such a beautiful thing that we are able to do, and it's working with the earth, and I love that. And it's funny, because I have my own insecurities around what I bring to the table when it comes to spirituality. Like, sometimes I feel like uh, less than and not really spiritually gifted because I use cards and I like you know and I don't always just channel you know just talking um, but it's actually if you want to look at it another way in a way that honors this experience and honors these divination tools it's really just a form of collaboration it's knowing that you like to work with um, other elements and I do really appreciate the physical and I, I, um, it brings me comfort, and I do enjoy reading and divining messages through other things. Um, so that's what I bring to the table. But in a more insecure state, I would feel like I don't actually have a, a pure connection to spirit. You know, it's just me. I can only do it when I have the cards. But I know that that's not true. But I also know that I enjoy reading. I enjoy using divination tools. I enjoy learning what all the ways that I can see a message or hear a message through spirit, through something else. I like that community aspect because then, like, I talk to spirit on my own, you know? But I like community, even though I also feel very shy in community and I'm still st working on, you know, getting my, expressing myself and having a strong voice and all of that. But Ultimately, I enjoy community because I, I like to work with others. I like to work through others and um, and collaborate in that way. It feels it feels good, um, and it honors the aliveness in all things because it's like these rocks are speaking to me. You know, it's not just me doing this on my own. I'm looking at the rocks. We're engaging with each other. It's a sh it's a shared experience, and you're sharing the magic, um, and that really makes you feel a part of this whole thing, this whole world, which is really nice. This is very calming, it's very relaxing, <laughs> which is nice. I think I'm gonna, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna challenge myself to do this type of um, divination practice for a while, do this kind of reading for a while. I wonder, I have a cup of mint tea leaves, because I drank some tea last night, and I, I've always wanted to learn how to do tea leaf readings. Um, and I'm, I'm a, I've got a Sagittarius moon, so I think that might be part of why I, I don't really like to be taught. I like to teach myself. <laughs> it could be my ego, but I think it's also just my Sagittarius moon. I'm just like, I want to learn my mouth. Um, and I also do think it's empowering to know that it's all within you, um, though it's important to learn from others, too. Like, I... I how do I know about geomancy? I learned about it last night, and it's funny because I kept, I didn't keep hearing, but I had a meditation where I heard geometry. And since then, I've found two other G words that sound very similar, and I feel like Spirit was like saying, gave me geometry because um, that's what would live in my head, or that's what I would understand, but they knew that I would eventually be able to connect it to geomancy and gematria both other words that have come into my life within the past like two days that are very significant and are teaching me new things um, new divination tools and just new tools for connecting to spirit and understanding the deeper realms and the codes and numbers patterns all things that i really enjoy so it's so interesting you know how things come through they come through in a specific way but when you allow yourself to read between the lines and give room allow for the unknown to speak to you as well 
the things that don't maybe generally apply to now apply, you get even more of a message. What I want to do is get that tea leaf, tea leaves, and see if I can just come up with a quick message. I don't actually know how to, okay, let's just see. I'll be right back. So I feel and thoughts and fear too. Okay, so these are the mint tea leaves I was drinking last night. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. And they're quite big leaves. And I was like in there and I was like, should I cut them off? But they're already like um, soaked. So it's kind of, they're hard to tear. So I was like, okay, I'll just see. There's this one video that I uh, found a couple, not a couple days ago, uh, like maybe a year ago now, maybe less than a year, um, and she does tea leaf readings. Cognitive universe. She's really good. She's really, really talented. Okay. Um. Would you be who you are? Would you be on You know how I feel. So unreal and thoughts and pities. A land can't be hoped. Sorry. Um, okay. So the first thing, oh, yeah. What needs to be let go of? There's things that need to be pushed out of your energy because it's like there is this aliveness and the thing about, um, it's, it's actually like, it's a thing about you, but it's also, this is also interesting because it kind of feels like this is a message about your spirit family, your soul family as well. They have an aliveness that is so vibrant and so easy to um, recognize that it's, it powers through all of the baggage. It doesn't matter how much they're carrying, their own, um, their own essence shines through and it overpowers everything. And it makes it easy, not easy, but it makes it so that they are able to continue to move forward in alignment despite 
having all of this stuff on their back because of just how strong their will is to remain authentic to their spirit and to their truth. And so there's this energy of all of these things being kind of tacked on to your spirit family, to their shoulders, like all of them are coming in with these things that are just draped over them, trying to cover their light, maybe intentionally, maybe unintentionally, just things that are attached because they recognize their vibrancy and they want to stay close to that. Um, but it is a lot and it does get to a certain point where it starts to kind of steal their own like soul or steal their own energy. And so you are coming in and you have, you've also been burned. So you also, you know, have parts of you that need to be recovered, but you also exist with kind of an openness. I can see you in here. I can see us, <laughs> um, whoever this might be. And I think you're going to show them how to get the weight off their back and just teach them the freedom of being able to live out in the sun. And the idea that it's like not just one little part of you needs sunlight. All of you need sunlight. When you go outside and you're sunbathing, you try to get as much of your body to be um, felt by the sun, to be covered and nourished by the sun. You're not just trying to get, you know, your cheek or your hand or your elbow. You're trying to get as much of you as possible. And they're like, and I feel like you're coming in to teach your soul and family, like nourishment has to be felt all over. You need access to all of you. You can't be giving up. You can't only have your crown chakra clear and then the rest of your chakras are blocked and feel like, oh, well, it's okay because I'm close to spirit because my crown chakra is open and balanced, but the rest of me is fucked. Like, no. And it's like, it's not just enough to have it in the head. What? Um, fire. Fire is what represents the head when they were talking about that with astrology, with um, the African astrology. It's not enough to just have your passion and your will and that be enough to drive you forward and then allow all of the other parts of you to be dedicated to carrying other people or carrying on these perspectives or holding on to these old truths, old things that don't exist anymore, that just don't serve you anymore. All of you needs to be available. All of you needs to be open and ready for, for spirit. And that's why there's also this clearing out it's a lot of clearing out, let go of more than half. I did a reading like that, I think, maybe a week ago now, or a couple of days ago. But that was a message that came through, and, ever, and there's just, just a lot of messages of letting go. But I feel like this is a message, this is a teaching of you showing other people how to, and how good it actually feels to be empty. It feels good to be empty. Because then you realize that emptiness is not really empty emptiness is full it's just full with magic it's full with the unknown it's full with raw material the untouched the um it hasn't been shaped yet it's just raw in its form it's just natural and that's an energy that's really beautiful to work with and that's an energy that you have within you you resonate with that you recognize that in yourself in nature that's probably why you're connected to nature and in others and in your soul family you'll be able to see that and don't try and I think that also with the soul family it's like there's this effort to try and make um, things that are kind of close to what you recognize within yourself and what you recognize within nature try and make that to be enough but it's not enough and it's not it and it's okay to admit that that doesn't mean that you're um, looking down on somebody or saying that they are not good enough or anything like that it's just a simple matter of understanding that you need something that is in alignment with you that's not a burden to you that doesn't take from you all the time without giving anything giving anything other than uh, more weight on your shoulders you know you need balance and right now it's unbalanced in how much is being carried which is how versus how much is being received how much is being given versus how much is being received and there's this energy of redefining your relationship with gratitude which is funny because that's something that came up for me was it yesterday i think yesterday understanding what gratitude actually meant um and it was just about giving to each other so we could both 
be happy, so we could both thrive, so that we could connect. Um, I was learning what an altar and all of the things on an altar really meant and what they were actually for because of my skewed relationship with gratitude because I was raised within religion. I had a really unhealthy relationship with gratitude that made me kind of um, judgy against it and not interested in partaking because it felt like a guilt trip and it felt like something to make me feel small and made me feel like um, I was not good enough and that I needed to constantly be working to earn the devotion and the love and the protection of my spirit family. And that did not resonate with me. So I was like, I don't want to do these things. And I had altars, but like it was just a different relationship. Um, but I just built my first altar. And it's a completely different experience because I'm understanding that the offerings and the gratitude that I'm expressing, it's, it's not about trying to earn your right to connect with these spirits because ultimately you're connected and they're family. They want to connect with you. It's just about creating an environment that is safe for them to enter into, that makes them feel comfortable, that makes them feel nourished, um, so that you can be safe and you can feel nourished as well and have a healthy relationship and clear communication. It makes it easier for both sides. Uh, and I didn't really understand that before, but I also had to get to the point where I was less judgy and less um, you know, know-it-all in order to be able to let down my guard and allow myself to be taught to learn these things. So it all takes time, and it will happen in the timing that it needs to. You know, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have been able to make that altar with the same energy that I did today um, a year ago, because I just had certain beliefs that I still needed to work through, and I still have beliefs that I need to work through. Um, but I'm here now. I'm closer now. You know, and a year, yeah, it's a long time, but it's actually no time at all. Like time feels like no time has passed. And yet a year has, which is crazy. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, yeah. And it just feels like, like if anything is in need of a rebirth, it's the energies attached to you. But you, your energy doesn't feel, it doesn't, like there's, you are alive. You are very alive. And the energies around you or around you or around your soul family. I mean, this is like we all are reflections of each other. So even around you, you are alive and your space is clear. But around you still is a lot of dead energy and a lot of energy that is in need of, of a rest state, of a rebirth, of a death and a rebirth. But you do not need to go into that death and that rebirth state with them. You've already done that so many times and you're alive now. And Spirit's like, don't come back here. It's time for you to be alive. Go on. I'm going to go take back my kids, and we're going to go through the healing process that they need to go through. But you keep moving forward. This is not your path. And it's like time to let go and go off on your own path and let these other spirits, let these other energies, let these other people, let these other situations go through their death and rebirth. Everybody's on their own journeys, and Spirit's going to take care of all of them. So it's not an act of abandonment. You gotta focus on yourself. Spirit already took care of you and did what you needed to do in your death state, in your rebirth. You're alive now. You're not dying anytime soon. You've already started your new life. It's a new world. You've already begun. You need to go and let these other energies go. Go back and go actually go through their death cycle. Because when an energy goes through a death cycle with you, they're not really going through their own. They're just like accompanying you. And they're just added on energy that's, um, that you have to carry and process and all of that. And it's a lot. And these energies need to go do that on their own. It wouldn't be helpful for you to be with them. And it's not helpful for them to be with you. Yeah, they have to find their life. And it's not even going to take sh the same shape as it as you once knew them as. Once they leave your energy and go off into their own experience and their own healing journey, they're going to be unrecognizable. You may never see them again. Um, but if you do, it's unrecognizable. Wouldn't be the same thing at all because this version of them is dead. It's time to go. Like they're, They will not exist anymore as, as is, which is a really good thing. 
And even with you, it's like less is more, right? So there's going to be a part of you that is going to get cut off in this letting go process because it's it's not even really you anymore it's it's become so much of them because it's they've because having them so deeply embedded with your own energy so deeply entwined that part of you just kind of became one with them which is okay because there's this understanding that we are like the starfish you could cut off a limb and you'll just grow it back but that loss is it's just a part of life and so it feels like with this letting go process part of you will also be let go of too part of you will also die but it's good it will make you more it'll make it easier for you to move into where you need to be you transform and you become smaller but in that smallness you're actually so much more you're lighter you're able to travel through the darkness more easily you're not carrying all this stuff with you. It's actually very healing. In the mountain of the soul, would you be who you are? Would you make me know myself? Okay. So, I feel like that's kind of it. I'm not going to pull from the tarot, but I, I was like, oh, the Empress would be cute. Hard to see. Prince of Pentacles. Um, but I do want to just see if we can get a little message from the goddess and the thing. Yeah. From the guardians and the goddesses and the gods. Would you be who you are? Would you look beyond the stars? Um, is there any final messages that you want to give for this reading? Any final messages? Final messages for the collective. Um, I'll shuffle five more times. Oh. Oh my god. Forgiveness. And then eternal love. Forgiveness. And it's funny because I was like, should we do this? And I was looking at her face, and it was like a yes. And here she comes. Telazo Leto. Telazo Leto? Forgive. Peonies just came into my head. But I think those are carnations. Um, no, they're not carnations. But peonies just came into my head. And when you enter into a state of forgiveness, you enter into a state of balance with yourself as well as with your ancestry and balance looks different to everybody there is no one way to express that but allowing your and part of forgiveness is letting go which is what this energy is always is all so is all talking about and you though when you're able to forgive it's nourishing your own heart it's creating that eternal love that Aphrodite is talking about it creates that fullness that she's talking about. But it's a forgiving heart. It's a, it's a heart that is filled with unconditional love that is able to let go. And let go not, in ter just, not just in terms of let go of whatever you were holding on to, like if it's a grudge or resentment, but let go of people. When you decide to let somebody leave your life, you're forgiving them because you were holding on to them because there was something you still wanted. There was something you felt like you still needed. You felt like there was something you still had to give. But then when you forgive yourself and you forgive that person, when you forgive this energy, you forgive this job, this situation, this life pattern, this, this career path, this dream, this idea, this emotion, this generational pattern, when you forgive it, it's allowed to move forward and enter its own state of eternal love with the divine. It's like, it's like you're sending it back to the divine is really what it feels like. You're giving this back to God and you're like, okay, I get it. <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> you can have this back. <laughs> I know that they need to be with you right now, not with me. Because I've got places I need to be as well. 
And everybody deserves their time with spirit. Everybody deserves their time in the mother's arms. You know? You've had your time, and now you've got to go do stuff. And now it's their time. Let them go have their time with spirit. You are so grateful you had yours. And your spirit's still with you, but you know, you're in a different stage now. You're not being held so closely. Those people need to be held right now. And spirit wants to hold them, but they're like, can you give them to me? <laughs> can I hold them? And you've got to be like, yes, yes, spirit, you can. See, if I keep going, there's always going to be a message. And I know I have to rein myself in, but I just always want to make sure that I say what, you know, everything. Everything that I can say, just in case. But I think we're done, so let me just shuffle five times. Or nine. Because. Okay, so one. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, yeah, I think we're done. And nine. Okay. Sacred contracts. Yeah. You got to go do your own, and they've got to go do theirs. Sacred medicine and past life healing. Hecate. Alrighty. Thank you for letting me read for you. Um, I hope this reading resonated, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.